Welcome to the Lawyer Fair Daily Podcast. It's Andrew Weaver here, the CEO of lawyerfair.co.uk. And today we're joined by Clive Bonney, who is uh, speaking to us from Brighton. Welcome, Clive. Hello there, Andrew. We have been discussing tropical thunderstorms, Clive. It's, it passed over you a couple of hours ago. It is now passing over us by the river in, in London. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a grey old summer's day. But Clive um, has a long list of achievements and multi-sector experience that I'm not going to go through. Have a look at, uh, have a look at his LinkedIn CV and uh, uh, have a look at Strategic Management Partners if you want more information. He was also named by Enterprise Nation as one of the UK's top 50 business advisors. So congratulations on that, Clive. Thank you. Um, great, great, uh, great accolade. But uh, the, the reason why we're asking you to join us, Clive, is about your role as a trademark agent and also as a member of the business advisor training team for yeah. the Intellectual Property Office. Now, we get uh, a lot of startups, a lot of companies generally, um, inquiring about IP, running into trouble with IP. So d- just give us a bit of background, Clive, about your relationship perhaps with the IPO and your relationship more generally with IP. Um, well, and, and then yeah. take us from there. Okay, um, background. Uh, as a professionally qualified management consultant, a big part of what I do for businesses large and small is effectively risk management and mitigation. And a really important and a big part of risk nowadays is uh, protecting and capitalizing intellectual property. I really bumped into all this by accident some years ago when I was uh, working with clients and, and they were trying to sell their businesses and they were discovering Uh, when they were marketing their businesses for trade sale, that actually by failing to have registered and protected their intellectual property, the value of those businesses were substantially diluted. Mm. Um, And I was uh, comparing this with uh, one or two firms who had successfully protected their businesses. Um, If we take the example of UK Branston Pickle, a lot of people like Branston as a pickle, But Branston Pickle was recently sold, or a year or two, sold to the Japanese. Now, Branston Pickle's uh, UK uh, manufacturing uh, assets at that time were worth uh, about £5 million. And yet, the business was bought for a sum just over £90 million. And the basis of that valuation was the fact that it had come up with a product which had been patented, and was protected for sale worldwide. Mm. So I think that's quite quite an interesting example for business owner managers to consider what are they missing out when they are failing to protect their IP. Yes, I mean, it's all about monetizing the idea, really. And and IP can cover so many different things as well, uh, Clive, can't it? I mean, just just give us an outline of, of the different areas of the business that IP could and should cover. Well, the most obvious uh, areas that people usually think of uh, are patents and trademarks. But the reality is um, that is relatively small to compared to the number of other areas uh, as to what IP consists of. And I'll, I'll give you some examples. Business records on employees, on their customer database, on operational procedures, website content, um, and a whole host of other things that are easily uh, taken by staff and used elsewhere quite often in competitive companies. Mm. So um, really data protection is one of the biggest problem areas at the moment and and that falls within IP. Mm. So the the wide angle of IP um, uh, actually covers almost every part of a business and some of those parts such as customer records and procedures and, and new products are vital to uh, companies' future profitability. I mean, th- those are really interesting points. Can I tell you, I, I even wasn't completely aware of what you just said, Clive, and I've been around in business for, for, for a while, so that's really interesting. And I, I think some people even forget that, that even the URL, I mean, you need to protect, make sure you get that protected. Yeah. Uh, I came yeah. across, funnily enough, I was in M&A in the past, and, and I, I came across exactly the examples you've mentioned. And I remember one company who had quite a strong... Uh, growing business, but they hadn't properly registered the URL. It was still registered in the name of the web developer. Yeah. Um, and they had an awful headache trying to get that off them. And um, mm. yeah, it was stress they didn't need. Um, so that's really, really useful, Clive. The, the IPO, just, just the Intellectual Property Office, just yeah. explain a little bit more about, about what it does and, and perhaps what resources it has uh, available. 
Well, the, the Intellectual Property Office, um, based up in Cardiff, is the government agency that's responsible for registering uh, UK intellectual property in order to protect it. So they assist people with intellectual property to register their property rights such as trademarks, patents, copyright and designs. Um, their website is a very important part of uh, business managers and, and owners toolkit. Um, and people can Google the IPO and they'll come across www.gov.uk um, and then Intellectual Property for Protection for Businesses. Mm -hmm. And on that website, there is a whole host of information which is actually quite nicely signposted for people to understand what their IP uh, protection rights are and how they should go about registering. But part of the website I, I would like to emphasize is um, an advisory uh, set of pages for people who are not used to I IP, who would like to understand the fundamentals. And this is called IP Equip, E-Q-U-I-P. And basically it's an e-learning tool to help businesses understand intellectual property in four short modules. And it also adds case studies. So there's a lot of information there, which includes free access to business checklists, business guides, and a document library. And if people go onto the IP equipped section, they can complete these courses, which cover and include trademarks, patents, and designs, and actually receive a CPD credit on completion. So it's a very useful uh, source of information. The, the other thing I'd like to mention about IPO is that they're really good at um, the roadshows across the UK. Uh, if you look at IP events on that site, you'll see, for example, in September next month, there are no less than 14 different events occurring across the IP, which are a mixture between face-to-face -face events in city centers, but also short one-hour webinars for people to be able to go online and get advice. And it's all free. Mm. That's the nice thing about it. Mm because IP in the business economy in Britain is a really, really important part of our economy, and that's why the government's doing a lot to help protect it. Well, that, that, I have to say, that's a bunch of information that's, that's very clear and really useful. Uh, I just Googled while Clive was saying that, IP Equip, very, very simple to find, um, yep. and, it, and it comes up on the top of the Google search. And obviously from there you can drill into to areas of the roadshows, etc. I mean, I, yep. think, I think the other quick uh, point I was going to make, which is slightly moving back to the original, some of the original conversations, Clive was not only the value is locked in to how you protect your IP but also of course uh, if you haven't got it protected you, you, you're at risk of people stealing it from you oh, yeah. um, and you know particularly the bigger boys um, yeah. you know always, it's always a concern of the smaller business I mean I, I non-disclosure agreements and confidentiality agreements are a, a, a bit of a kind of I have mixed views on it Clive, actually. I'm interested mm. in your thoughts, because at the very, very early stage right. of the startup, particularly with well, fund funding... Well, whenever I, I go into an organization and I look at employment contracts, I'm looking for non-disclosure agreements, right. because not enough employers actually add that clause, and it's only a small clause, to ensure that employees understand the do's and don'ts of taking IP uh, if and when they leave, or even taking it whilst they're in employment. Mm. Um, so those contracts are terribly important and just as important are, are those contracts with their supply chain. Mm. So suppliers and customers contracts should always contain non-disclosure agreement e even when people are bidding for new uh, uh, services and products with, with clients. Mm. Even a proposal should contain the words in commercial confidence so that those people receiving those proposals do not disclose and share those proposals to the competitors in order to get a better price, which often happens. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll, I'll give you just a couple of examples, if I may, on, on issues that small organizations and large ones encounter. Google AdWords. Now, people who do not trademark or protect their, their own brand means that competitors can buy Google AdWords which describe the same product or service. And when people are going online to look at uh, the original advertisers, they will encounter when they hover their um, cursor over that word, 
Google AdWords supplied by the competitors and get redirected to other sites. So Google AdWords are a big source of problems for people who do not protect their trademarks. And protection is not complex, and nor is it expensive. A trademark to protect for 10 years will cost someone £175 as an application fee. That's very little money. Yeah. To protect a design for five years costs just £60, and a patent is £280. So this is not an expensive process, and it's not too complicated. And one doesn't have to spend, to be honest, a lot of money with solicitors. Because if you go online and you follow the guides, you can actually do quite a lot of it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But a word of warning, it does help to talk to a trademark agent because they can advise on some of the smaller details that sometimes the DIY people miss. Mm. Clive, that's brilliant. Absolutely superb. And, I, and I'm a great advocate of getting the foundations of your business in place you know, correctly at the beginning so that you don't need lawyers, <laughs> frankly. Mm. Uh, but also, uh, going back to the very original point, that you're locking in the value of your business because, you know, yeah. working, working hard for many years, you want to exit and get the right price. Um, you don't want to find yourself in a pickle with a failure to register your IP. So, Clive, thank you for all of that. Um, no need to have made any notes if anybody's listening and wants to follow up on that. I will include all of these references in the, in the notes to this podcast. And, of course, Clive is a trademark agent. He's available. Strategic Management Partners is, is his firm also on, on LinkedIn. Clive, can I thank you again? It is still pouring with rain. You haven't brought any sunshine into my life, uh, outside <laughs> it, of this it, office at least. It's just stopped, Andrew. <laughs> I, I look forward to it. Clive, thanks again. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Not at all. That was the lawyer. Bye bye. That was the lawyer. Fair daily podcast. Uh, there'll be more tomorrow. Thanks for listening.